time are purely psychological, but not all. It appears as though we really do have the capacity to extend out the present. Okay. Off to Salt Lake City. And, Joe, you're on with Dean Radin. Good morning. Hey, thanks a lot. Um, first of all, it's an honor to speak to both of you, and it's great to hear your voice, Art, uh, despite you. the cold or whatever. Uh, Dr. Radin, this subject is so amazing and important, I think, when you consider the precarious state we find ourselves in um, with the environment, with the possible looming specter of nuclear war, the greed, all these things that are going on. Um, I like to think that the majority or mass consciousness of all of us are, are good people who want to enjoy nature, fall in love, raise families, enjoy music, things like that. Um, so I'd hope, I wanted you to speak about that, um, maybe what we could do. And um, another question, one thing that helps me visualize this is that in the evolution of the Earth, if you think about the biosphere, the atmosphere, the ozone layer, the shields, um, I was hoping you could speak about something, I think it's called the noosphere or the noosphere, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's basically evolving right now, and it's, it's this mass consciousness sphere that we're connecting to, and maybe that would help Art understand um, the locality of it, how he explained about, you know, radio waves can go only so far, so it's kind of a centralized thing. Um, and I'll wait for the answer. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, it was uh, Teilhard de Chardin who came up with this concept of the world as a living, thinking, breathing entity that we're evolving towards, uh, an electronic membrane that covers the world. That, that was the new sphere. Uh, as to what we can do to help, that that's where all of these new and in, in, initi new uh, initiatives are coming from for mass meditations and programs like the global consciousness project to begin to see what the effect of our minds are on on the environment and on our, other people uh, i i suspect i don't think we have proof of this yet but i do suspect that one of the reasons for disruption and feelings of chaos in the world is because our minds are disruptive and chaotic and so it raises the possibility that if it was possible to create moments of very high coherence among lots and lots of people, uh, feelings of love perhaps uh, that encompass the entire world, mm -hmm. everything would become much better. Now, it's not clear to me that it would overnight suddenly change global warming, for example, but it would certainly push it in the right direction, I think. Okay. Uh, it, it certainly needs a push. Um, Tommy in Seattle, you're on the air with Dean Radin. Is that me? That's you. Uh, okay, uh, my name is Tommy, and I'm from Seattle. I'm listening in on KVI. Uh, Dean, I'm 69 years old this summer. I've had uh, five alien abductions that I can remember, and I'm up to 40 contacts now by uh, what I believe are alien crew members. And I asked them about telepathy, and they said it was electronic. Okay, you put that aside for a moment and then go to my mother calling my name the moment she died, her living in, in Detroit and me being in Seattle. And my question to you is, do you think that the human mind is an electronic transmitter and that with the right equipment and technology we can tune into the radio waves of the human mind and uh, use that for long-distance communication? Actually, it's, a, it's an interesting question in a way. Um, obviously, you know, when, when it comes to uh, what we're discussing uh, this morning, I, you know, as a radio person, I, I have to believe that there is some medium of transmission, some medium of transmission. I have no idea what it is, but I don't believe that a particle here and a particle on the other side of the world move um, in the same way without some kind of communication, uh, albeit one we don't understand, but there's something, there's some medium. Do you think we'll ever figure it out, Dean? Well, is it electronic in the way that radio works? Probably not. Is there some form of communication? Probably yes. And so I, I think I agree with you, Art, that uh, there, there's some, we'll eventually figure out, if we're, if we're clever enough, uh, how these connections work. Uh, the underlying question, though, is whether the mind and the brain are identical. Are they the same thing? The neuroscientists today suggest that they are, that we're, as, as Francis Crick put it, we're nothing but a pack of neurons. That's, that's the prevailing opinion. I don't think that's correct because a pack of neurons, as far as we can tell, wouldn't be able to do clairvoyance, for example, and yet we know clairvoyance is possible. So... There may be, uh, the brain may be rethought in some future time as something like 
a, a transceiver or a means of receiving consciousness. And mm -hmm. consciousness is out there somehow, and it's expressed through the brain. That doesn't tell us what the medium is and how it connects it, how, what consciousness is, but it would help reframe the, the discussion from just brain-like stuff into mind and brain stuff. There's a medium somewhere, I'm convinced. Um, or maybe it's just that I need to come up with a different model of reality. Uh, Lori in Salem, Oregon, you're on with Dean Radin. Hi. Hi, Art. Hi. Many blessings. Um, Thank you. Dean? Yes. I have been trying to find the answer to this question. I had um, full intent consciously sat on my couch to go into my room and go to sleep and go be with my dog, Sadie. She passed away four years ago this July. And uh, I went in with, like I said, full intentions, fully conscious, aware of what I wanted to do. Went in my bed, went to sleep. Right away, went with her. But in real life, I could hear the phone ringing. And I did not want to leave my dream. So I ignored it and kept continuing my journey with my dog. The phone's ringing and ringing. Finally, I was able to shut it out. And when I woke up, I remembered the phone ringing. And I kind of got perturbed and walked over to the phone. And who was calling? Pushed the button. And it was my voice saying, hello, Sadie. Oh, now that's weird. Yeah. That's I've really weird. I've been on a major search to find out how is that possible. It is my voice saying, hello, Sadie. Hmm. It's still on my answer machine. I even put it on my 16-track recorder. I'm a musician, so I don't know how or why I'm looking for an answer. Boy, I'm, af I'm afraid I can't even begin to give it to you, and I doubt Dean can either, but it's, uh, that is fascinating, Dean. Yeah, it's a very interesting uh, event. I mean, it, it reminds me of what uh, physical mediums claim to be able to do, spirit photography, electronic voice phenomena, that sort of thing. Right. Some sometimes very intense intentions will cause electronic equipment to somehow get it. It'll send the information will be impressed somehow. Uh, I don't know how many cases are of high credibility, but your case sounds certainly like that. It, it sounds very interesting. Dean, um, I wouldn't have suggested this to you otherwise, but, you know, you're going to do some research in this area. So I, I would say look into EVPs, electronic voice phenomena. Mm -hmm. It's rather convincing uh, I wonder if you have ever looked at it, if you know anything about it at all. Yeah, I, I have looked at it. And, of course, you as a, a radio guy are, are certainly aware of all of the, the ways that you can get these messages by artifact. Uh, I, I participated with um, a, a person from the U.K. who wanted to use our electromagnetically shielded room to try an experiment in order to get rid of outside radio waves. Right. Uh, and he claimed that he d he did get messages, even inside the shielded room. We're talking about a solid steel 2,000-pound uh, Faraday cage. Uh, I couldn't hear what he was able to hear. So it either means I'm not trained to be able to hear these messages. I mean, they weren't, like, crystal clear, but right. he claimed that he could. So, uh, so I, I don't know. For me, the jury is still out when it comes to EVP. Okay. Um, Don, Seattle, Washington, you're on with uh, Dean Radin. Good morning. Yes, good morning, Mr. Raiden. Uh, there was a couple of gentlemen who predicted 911. Uh, the one of the men was assassinated afterwards. I don't know his name. And the other guy was Alex Jones. And they said if there is an outside threat like a bin Laden, we know who to blame. And we know the government wanted to blow up buildings. They wanted to use planes. They claimed that 11 million of us are going to die. And I just want to know how you feel about Alex Jones and this man predicting 911. Okay, well, I wasn't aware he did predict it. Um, and, Dean, do you know anything at all about yeah, no, that? Yeah, I, I, I don't know about Alex Jones or these right. predictions. Right, got you. Um, Albany, um, New York, I guess. Uh, Michael, you're on the air with Dean Radin. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I, I listen to you all, all the time, and it's really interesting. Uh, I, I'd like to ask Dean Radin if, by chance, he has ever used your type of energy healing, much like I do, which is uh, point at a certain uh, storm, like I did with Katrina Knight on the uh, television screen, 
and he and I saw they were going towards Corpus Christi. Uh, 